Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. This topic on magic squares will be dealt with in two lectures. So, today we know that uh, there is a lot of uh, research that is going on on uh, recreational mathematics. So, this actually forms a very interesting candidate. So, to be presented to students, so in order that they cherish what they do, particularly in the field of arithmetic. So, the uh, topics that I would like to cover. So, in this part of the lecture is classification of uh, magic squares. So, as it is done in the Indian text. So, and I will uh, briefly discuss the purpose which has been stated by Narayana Pandita. So, as to why one needs to study the magic square. And uh, we will uh, take a couple of examples of magic squares from very ancient texts. For instance, uh, in Nagarjuna's work, so it is actually referred to as kacha putta. So the term kacha in Sanskrit refers to tortoise. The shell of the tortoise will have some kind of a hexagonal kind of a type. So maybe so the magic square, the numbers are represented in various cells, so which resemble that, and perhaps it is why it is called kacha putta. And we will also see an interesting magic square which has been presented by Varaha Mihira and it is uh, Sarvato Bhadra. So, Bhadra is the name of magic squares. So, in fact, uh, the mathematics of magic square is called Bhadra Ganitam. Okay. So, then we will uh, discuss the horse motion method, horse move, Turaga Gati. So, Turaga, Turanga, Turangama, so all the three words refer to horse in Sanskrit. So, Turagagati method of obtaining magic squares. In fact, Narayana Pandita discusses this at great length at the beginning of his chapter on Bhadra Ganita and then he moves on to various other ways of constructing magic squares. And uh, so, we will start with uh, 4 by 4 magic square which is actually called Samagarbha and uh, PD here refers to pan diagonal. So, we will quickly see what pan diagonal means and how many pan diagonal magic squares can be constructed. So, so this is an interesting question which has been posed by Narayan Pandita in his Ganita Kaumadi and he also gives an answer. So, that is 384, we will see how it is and we will also discuss the ancient Indian method of constructing odd squares. So, then the relation between Kottaka and magic squares, then we will see some of the properties of 4 by 4 magic squares and then we will see how from this property one can construct magic squares elegantly. So, this is how we will progress. As I was mentioning ma magic squares is a very interesting topic, so particularly children will definitely enjoy and unfortunately uh, it is not something which is a part of the current curriculum. So, it seems a lot of things can be done. So, from what one sees. So, at great length Narayana Pandita discusses. In fact, this chapter contains 75 plus verses. So, one complete chapter has been devoted by Narayana Pandita. So, the term Bhadra in Sanskrit means an all round well being prosperity kind of a thing. Magic square perhaps, I mean there are certain magic squares which one will find in temples and various inscriptions and uh, so it is something like Yantra perhaps. See, yantra you will have some Aksharas inscribed in that. So, in magic squares you have some numbers inscribed in that. So, maybe it had that kind of a significance one does not know. So, and that could be the cause for calling it a Bhadra Ganita or it could be Bhadra Ganita. So, in order to protect oneself as Narayana says, so among mathematicians you can pose this question and if he is not able to answer you save yourself. <laughs> so, anyway, so that could be the Bhadra, Bhadra Ganita. So, a detailed exposition of mathematics of magic square. So, our classification and so on a method to construct. So, is all found uh, only in um, 13th, 14th century texts. So, the earliest text is one of Takkara Peru, it is called Ganita Sara Kaumudi and then Narayana Pandita's work is called Ganita Kaumudi. 
in fact somebody was asking me some time ago so what does this word kaumudi mean kaumudi normally refers to a text so which deals with grammar but in fact the word kaumudi actually means moon's light okay ganita kaumudi the text actually means it is a uh, moonlight so mathematics the moon uh, mathematics in the form of moonlight perhaps <laughs> so that is how the uh, name the ganita grammar kaumudi all came after that ah ganita kaumudi ha huh, yeah so ganita kaumudi in fact uh, the term so kaumudi <coughs> refers to moonlight and uh, the siddhanta kaumudi so these texts came much later and uh, this kaumudi is a general term which is added to a certain text which is presented so lucidly kind of a thing okay so it is quite difficult to understand so the original text of panini and therefore this kaumudi so the grammar presented in the form of a moonlight so that that is how it is so before proceeding further i would just like to introduce you certain terminologies so this magic square so can be broadly divided into semi magic magic and pan diagonal so semi magic so wherein only rows and columns sum up to a given number so not even diagonal so if the diagonals also the main diagonals okay also sum up it is a, a magic square and pan diagonal so is something wherein not only the main diagonals but even the other diagonals sum up to the given number so for instance you just take this example so here uh, if you look at this so 6 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8 so once you come across you have to move here so that does not sum up to 34 so this is basically a magic square wherein so all the rows and columns and the main diagonals so they will sum up to 34 but this pan diagonals will not sum up to 34 but again the same elements actually fill up this magic square so this is a pan diagonal magic square wherein you can see that 13 plus 16 plus 4 plus 1 it is 34 or you can take 14 plus 12 plus 5 plus 3 is 34 or 10 plus 6 plus 7 plus 11 so all of them sum to 34 this is what is called a pan diagonal magic square indians have actually specialized in constructing pan diagonal magic squares and uh, as you will see narayana pandita presents various methods by which one can obtain pan diagonal magic squares so in the text of takkara peru as well as of narayana pandita what one finds is uh, the same kind of a classification so samagarbha vishamagarbha and vishama so these are the names which are given so samagarbha actually refers to a magic square so n by n magic square so it is of the type 4m so m is an integer so it can be 4 8 and so on divisible by 4 primarily and uh, this is vishamagarbha so this is also sama but 4m plus 2 even and uh, n is vishama any odd it could be 4n plus 1 4n plus 3 so the magic squares which have been presented by thakkara peru in his ganita sara kaumudi are of non pan diagonal nature whereas the one presented by narayana is pan diagonal and he actually gives a uh, examples of few magic squares so wherein n is equal to 3 4 5 6 all of them have been given by him and uh, one will start with so 3 by 3 square one goes from 1 to n square so all the 1 to 9 they will fill up that and then you will get a magic square so there the sum will be 15 and if you have a 16 uh, 1 to 16 then the sum will be 34 and then 65 and so on so the sum will be so the magic sum will be n into n square plus 1 by 2 so narayana actually gives a certain procedure wherein one need not consider this element so 1 to 16 to construct a 4 by 4 you can give any number and you will be able to construct a magic square which is pan diagonal in nature so it is a kind of systematic procedure which has been presented by narayana so before i proceed further so i wanted to uh, quote a couple of verses so which have been stated by narayana right at the beginning of the chapter so he says so sad ganita chamatkrutaye yantra vidam pritaye ku ganakanam garvakshiptyai vakshye tatsaram bhadra ganitakhyam so he has uh, clearly stated out three reasons one is sadganita chamatkrutaye if you are a, a good mathematician 
so then you will enjoy so chamatkriti or you can excel in a certain forum by knowing this technique so chamatkriti hai yantra vidam pritaye the various kinds of uh, permutations and combinations the various ways of arranging things etc can be known and therefore priti they will be pleased to knowing this techniques and uh, he also says ku ganaka naam garvakshiptyai so garvakshipti means so in order to knock off the arrogance of ku ganakas so this will be useful vakshye tat sara so samagarbha vishama garbhe vishaman cheti tridha bhavet bhadram then bhadranke chaturapte see one thing which is very interesting about narayana is he presents everything so systematically so at the beginning of the chapter so he presents the whole summary and whatever there is required in order to understand so he says bhadranke chaturapte niragrake tad bhavetcha samagarbham so this is the definition of samagarbha chaturapta means when it is divided by 4 so when it is divisible by 4 you call it as samagarbha divyagre so by this time most of you should be familiar with the word agra agra is remainder jagre if two happens to be the remainder when you divide by 4 so then it is called vishamagarbha if 3 or 1 3 eka agre kevalam vishamam you call it vishama fine then sarvesham bhadranam shredhi gat shredhi ritya bhavet ganitam so this is an interesting statement and as you will see so he says so all the ma- magic squares so that you will be discussing so the fundamental thing which will be uh, uh, you made use of is a certain arithmetic progression so this arithmetic progression is referred to as shredhi shredhi is a sort of step see so it increases by d so that is why it is called shredhi ganitam so is a shredhi ritya bhavet ganitam you make as you make use of a certain arithmetic progression and then you do the magic square so therefore he says yesham ganitam abhishtam those who are interested so in doing this magic squares so sadhyau tesham mukha prachayau if you have to construct a magic square you have to first of all find out a see given a certain number yes so the magic sum has to be yes so for that you have to find a certain appropriate arithmetic progression so placing which into the square you will be able to get the magic square so therefore he says sadhyau tesham mukha prachayau mukha is the first term prachaya is the common difference okay by which it increases so yadyavanti grahani shredhi vishaye bhavet gachha see yadyavanti grahani see the term griha when it is used here refers to the cell in a magic square when you draw that okay so that particular cell is called griha so in a 4 by 4 magic square you will have 16 grihas okay so grahani shredhi vishaye bhavet gachha so that is termed as gachha gachha so if you recall in uh, aryabhati also it refers to the number of terms in a sequence gachaha means the number of terms in a sequence arithmetic sequence which you have to deal with so bhadre kritigata koshthe tanmoolam jayate charanaha so gachasya moolam charanaha jayate means so if you have uh, 4 by 4 magic square so the number of uh, elements will be 16 so root of that will be the number of uh, rows or number of columns so that is called charana charana is basically a row so then he says iha narayana vihita paribhasha bhadra ganita in fact <laughs> so in kaumudi we have the first prakarana is called paribhasha prakarana this is all that is required terminologies have been clearly stated now now let us get into the magic square so in order to understand the popularity of magic square so in fact what one notes is uh, the famous mathematician uh, ramanujam so in his notebook he starts with so magic squares okay and uh, we will be referring to professor vijay raghavan he has uh, worked out some very interesting properties so which we will be discussing little later so he in his article on jaina magic squares in 1941 he notes the author of this note learned by heart at the age of 9 the following pan diagonal square which was taught to him by an elderly person who had not been to school at all in fact some of this interesting mathematics uh, so based on this leelavathi and this kind of a problems i remember when i was uh, i think in primary school or so some old man came so and then he was quoting some problems so later now when i study this indian mathematics i realize so the kind of problems that he was giving was sort of based on this leelavathi so it has been sort of uh, available so the construction of magic squares also so many people know 
So, he says uh, by a person who had not been to school at all. Okay. So, it has been a part of tradition as a recreational uh, tool. So, magic squares has been there. Uh, this Kachaputa of uh, Nagarjuna, so there is a very interesting mnemonic. So, you see look at this Arka Indu Nidha Nari Tena Lagna Vinasanam. There is a typo here Arka Indu Nidha Nari Tena Lagna Vinasanam. Now, I would like uh, you to recall the Katapayadi system which we discussed. So, now if you look at every syllable here and then try to translate it into uh, this form of a magic square, you will see that A refers to 0, Ka refers to 1, E refers to 0. In Katapayadi system, all vowels refer to 0 and Nya and Na also refer to 0. So, therefore, if you see here, so Na, so Indu. So, da refers to 8, ni, dha, na, ri, ra is 2 and then te na lagna, te na lagna, see v, na, sa, na. So, this mnemonic, I mean uh, what is the significance of this mnemonic? See the point is, so uh, see here in this magic square you see a uh, certain cells have been filled with 0 and the certain cells are in fact it is exactly 8 cells are 0, 8 cells are filled with numbers. And uh, these cells which have been filled with 0, so can be uh, filled with uh, n minus, see for instance if you look at here, so this cell is 0. So, I 6 is here and I put a n minus 6 here and you find uh, 0 here, I put a n minus 2 here, so since 2 is there. So, if you sort of fill it in this way, you will see that, so this actually turns out to be a pan diagonal magic square whose sum is 2 n. So, that way they have created a very interesting mnemonic by which whatever be the number that you want to get, so you will be able to construct a magic square. So, once you remember this mnemonic that is all, see that is one thing. So, here if you want to get the sum as 2 n plus 1, so then all that you need to do is, so instead of uh, n minus 8, you have to have n minus 7, so appropriately filling this, so you will be able to construct a magic square provided you know this mnemonic in your mind that is all. Pardon? Yeah, so alternate element in the sense see if you see here see n minus 2 and 2 that is why I have put. So, 6 and n minus 6, so that is why I have, so n minus 3 and 3, so diagonally. Okay. So, this magic square whose sum is uh, 100 is also uh, to just uh, convey you the kind of uh, antiquity. So, we just have this, it is called Nagarjuniya associated with Nagarjuna. So, now I move on uh, to the uh, magic square which has been presented by Varahamihira in a different context. See, Varahamihira does not discuss Bhadraganita per se, but in the context of uh, see Varahamihira, Bhad Samhita is a huge compendium in which uh, almost all topics will be found <laughs> starting from geology to uh, I mean earthquake and various other uh, rainfall and so on. So, here we have uh, a chapter wherein he speaks of the mixing of various things and here we find these verses. Dvitriindriya ashtabhagaihi. So, Dvitri Indriya is sense organ which is 5 in number, ashta is 8 bhagaihi. So, the other half of this uh, other quarter of the verse basically refers to the names of certain uh, elements. Okay. So, which will be used for producing say fragrances. So, Agaru, Patram, Turushka, Shaila. Okay. So, they are supposed to be taken in this kind of proportions. So, then Vishaya Ashta Paksha Dahana, Vishaya Ashta Paksha Dahana. So, Dahana is fire, so which is actually 3 because of Treta Agni and uh, these elements Priyangu, Musta, Rasa, Keshaha. In one quarter of the verse, he basically gives the number, other quarter he lists the elements. So, now in the set of uh, two verses, so you have eight quarters, half of them is number and half of them. So, 16 elements have been listed out here and uh, that is why he is called, he is calling it as Shodashake Kachapute. So, it is a sort of a magic square wherein 16 cells are there, Yatha Tatha Mishrite Chaturudravye. So, Yatha Tatha Mishrite as you want you can sort of mix them. So, as you want in the sense, 
So, this is a Chaturbhadra, so a very interesting uh, magic square which is pan diagonal. If you look at this, so 5, 8, 4, and 1, they sum to 18. So, anyway, you sum up, so you take up any of these uh, 4. So, you take this 4, you take this 4, you take this 4. So, all of them will sum up to 18. That is why he is called, he is saying, Yatha Tatha Mishrite. So, you can sort of. So, the point he is trying to say is, so if this uh, final magnitude has to be 18. So, you try to mix up various things, various elements, so that the total measure is 18 and try to find out, so which kind of a uh, thing comes out to be. I mean, it is uh, in that sense, I mean, he is trying to present it. Uh, so, Kartavya Sarvato Bhadraha. So, he said. And in fact, Bhattotpala so goes on uh, to comment on this yena kena prakarena chaturdraviya mishrite eki krite tasma dhyatastato grihyamana ashtad shabhagaha bhavanti ataha sarvato bhadra samyaha. So, he is trying to explain so this verse. So, this is the translation which you can read at leisure. This uh, magic square of Varahmihira, so when it is uh, sort of added with another square like this. <laughs> So, you will get this. So, in fact, Narayana considers in great detail. So, the elements is 1 to 16 and you fill this magic square and uh, this 1 to 16 when it is sort of filled up. So, what are the various ways in which it can be done? So, we will show a little later as I was mentioning. So, it is only 384. So, the point I am trying to say is this Varahamihira's magic square, so added to this will give one of these 384, so possibilities of the 4 by 4 magic square which has been discussed at great length, pan diagonal magic square which has been presented by Narayana. We also find the magic square in inscriptions, so for instance in this uh, Jhansi district in the Jaina temple you find this magic square and this magic square is again one of the 384. So, if you have a pan diagonal magic square, it has to be one of the 384 which Narayana discusses at great length. So, the first uh, procedure which has been discussed to obtain magic square is one of the Turagagati. So, Turagagati in Chaturanga, Chaturanga is a chart of chess kind of a game. So, he says Chaturanga Turaga Gatya Dvaudvau Shredhi Samudbhava Vankau Nyasya Kramot Kramenacha Koshthaikya Ekantarenacha Savya Savya Turangama Ritya Koshthan Prapuraye Dankaihi Samagarbhe Shodasha Griha Bhadre Prokto Vithishchayam. That is all. So, this is uh, these are the two verses 10 and 11 which actually present the way to construct a magic square by Turagagati. So, this is what he has stated. And then he says, Tiryakkoshthagatanam urdhvasthanancha karnagaanancha ankanam sanyogaha prasangmito jayate tulyaha. So, this basically explains that if you construct it this way, so then you will see that, so this will be a pan diagonal magic square. So, how does it come out? Tiryak Koshthagata means, so suppose this is what is called Tiryak, you understand, horizontal thing is called Tiryak, okay. And uh, the other thing is Urdhva, Urdhva is up, so vertical, so whether you sum the so cells horizontally or you sum the cells vertically, Urdhva sthanam, then Karnaganam, so he does not say the main diagonal, so all Karnas, okay. So, whether it is pan diagonal, so that is how it turns out to be Karnaganam, if you just add it like this. So, then also, so 9 plus 3 plus 14 plus 8, so or 1 plus 10 plus 16 plus 7 or if you do it this way, 8 plus 9, 8 plus 2 plus 9 and then 15, so all of them will sum to 34, okay. That is what he is saying, Ankanam Sanyogaha Prasangmitaha Jayate Tulyaha, Tulyaha means all of them will sum to the magic sum. So, he has samagarbhanam ap ye annesham udbhavas chaturbhadrat. So, now let us try to understand. So, you closely try to follow this, this Turagagati. So, you start with 1 in the left topmost. Then, Turagagati, where do you place 2? So, you jump here, 
this will be 2, fine. So, this is a horse move, Turaga Gati. So, read this verse carefully, Chaturanga Turaga Gatya, the word dvau dvau has to be understood very carefully. You have 1 to 16, so 1 to 4 is one thing and this 4 you split into 2, so 1, 2 and then 3, 4. So, this Turaga Gati is applicable for pair of them. So, in fact, he uses the word Yugma Yugala kind of a thing. Okay. So, 1, 2 is Turaga Gati, 3, 4 will be Turaga Gati, but not 2 and 3. Fine. So, this will be true for every pair of 2s. Okay. So, of the 4, 2 will have Turaga Gati, the next 2 will have Turaga Gati. So, that is how it is. So, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Fine. Then, Huh? So, very good. In fact, that is how this 384 comes into. <laughs> I will explain that it is very simple, very interesting. Okay. 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, let us start with uh, 5 and then uh, 5 you have to get 6. So, get it this way. This is Turagagati. Then 7 and 8. If you closely follow this, you will see that 1, 2, 3 and 4 has been done in a sort of pradakshina way. Okay. So, it is a sort of krama, krama in the sense you go in a sort of circular way. So, you will see we have 5, 6, 7 and 8. Then you consider 4 more, next to 4. So, you have to start with 9. So, start with 9. So, and then, so you have to get turagagati 10, 11 and 12. So, this is again sort of cycle, uh, clockwise and then start 13, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh yeah. So, this is how this Toraga Gati. Ah. But that 9 could have been placed in the place of 12. That is precisely why I am saying otherwise you will not have this multiple choice if it is sort of fixed. That is why we have this 384. I will explain why this 384. It is pretty simple now. Once you have understood this. So, pairs of them you have to split into 4. So, this 4 has to be again taken as pairs. So, pairs of them should have Turagagati. This is all. No more uh, constraint on this. Fine. So, now, so I will answer this question now. So, you start with Turagagati 2. So, how many possible ways I can place in Turagagati 2? So, having placed 1 here. So, I can have only 4 ways. So, look at this. So, this is one way. The second is to place at this place. This is also Turagagati. Then the third possibility is you can go up and then go there. So, that will be mapped here. Fine. So, it is a sort of torus. Other possibility is you move on this side. So, you can go here and then you will reach here. This will be mapped there. So, between 1 and 2 you have 4 possibilities. There are 4 ways in which 2 can be placed. Given this, you are placing the 1 at the topmost left cell. So, having given this, so, there is no constraint on where you place 3, that is why I said. So, 3, 4 has to be Turagagati, but where you place 3, I mean it is left to you. So, now having placed 2 in this place, so here Narayana has hinted it, see, Koshthaike Ekantarena Cha. Aikya means 2 cells which are close by, or Ekantara is 1 difference. So, the 2 cells can be close by in choosing 3. So, suppose let us say we started with 2 here. Now, 3 can be placed here, here or here. There are 3 possibilities. Fine. So, with 1 there were 4 possibilities to place 2. Having placed 2 there are 3 possibilities for placing 3. So, 4 into 3 you get 12. So, now having placed 3, so 4 anyway is fixed by Turagagati. After placing 4 now you have to place 5. So, there is no constraint on where you place 5. So, look at this. So, suppose I have placed 3 here. So, 5, so 2 is filling here and 5 is, so 5 can be placed either here or here. So, there are 2 ways. So, 4 into 3 into 2, there are 24 ways in which. So, once these 4 things are fixed, so the rest of the square actually gets fixed. So, there is no way that you can play around and therefore, see for 1 with this topmost cell, you have 24 possibilities. And one can move anywhere of the 16 cells and therefore, 16 into 24 you get 384 possibilities. So, this actually we has beautifully been explained by Narayana 
So, by drawing 24 and then he says, so one can go anywhere of the 16 cells and therefore, you have 384 possibilities. So, right at the beginning, in fact, he poses this as a question. So, and uh, you can see that the later part of the verse also, Savya Asavya Turangama Ritya. So, Savya is uh, left, Asavya is right. Okay. So, moving left and right kind of a thing. So, Savya, so left and right in the sense, so having placed 2 here, you can place 3 here to the left, to the right and so on. So, it is this kind of a thing and even this Turagagati can be taken as Savya Asavya. So, if you play around, we will be able to see all that. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, the verse which actually poses this question is as follows. Vada means may you tell me. So, kati bhedaha, how many uh, possibilities are there? So, yekad yekotare means, so the first term is 1, yekotara common difference is 1. So, you have this 1 to 16. So, in chaturbhadra, so in a 4 by 4 magic square, how many possibilities are there? So, ganite ganakavara astyatra garvaste, if you feel that you are <laughs> knowing enough mathematics, so may you tell me. So, how many possibilities are there? Okay. And then after discussing, he finally concludes, evam chaturbhadrasya chaturbhihi yamalaihi chaturashitya shatatraya bhedaha bhavanti. See, chaturashiti is 84, adhika is plus shatatraya 300, so 384 possibilities are there. So, this is how, in fact, this has been proved by so Rosser and Walker in 1938 and a much elegant proof has been provided by T. Vijay Raghavan. We will also discuss the properties which have been stated and based on the properties you can also construct. See, based on the properties, if you want to construct this kind of a magic square, then you have to do addition subtraction quickly. Mentally, you can do that. These are all small numbers, you can do that. But if you do by Turagagati, you can sort of mechanically quickly place it and then play around with that. This is a very interesting uh, tool to play around. So, to construct uh, odd squares, so this is a even square. In fact, uh, to once we have 4 by 4, so to construct 8 by 8, so to move on to the higher order of Samagarbha, so you can start with this 4 by 4 and then once again play around like this Turagagati, you will be able to get that. So, we will consider one example little later. But here uh, another interesting method has been stated uh, which has been discussed by Narayana himself. Um, uh, so, here I will not uh, get into this uh, verses, but I will quickly explain. So, how one gets this kind of magic squares. So, odd square. So, this is I think uh, more popular uh, 3 by 3. So, we can have only 8 possible squares. Uh, maybe I will just uh, work out one example. See, here you start with 1 and then the prescription is move up, okay. diagonally move up. If there is a cell to fill up, you fill. So, otherwise it is a sort of torus, you move down. So, where do I place 2? I place hiller because there is no cell here. So, there is no griha to occupy. So, this is like a torus, you map it, so it comes here. Again you have to move diagonally up, so you have to move here. So, since there is no cell here, it is like a torus, so you have to place it here. So, since this cell is already occupied with 1, so what you have to do is you have to just move down. Okay. So, 4, you place 4 here, then diagonally keep filling 4, 5, 6 ho gaya. fine. So, at 6, so you have to move up here and this will be actually mapped to this point 4 here, so in a torus, but this is already occupied and therefore, you have to place 7 below. So, you go up, so this will be mapped to this 8 and then, so you go up, so this will be mapped to this point 9. So, this is how you get this magic square and the same technique can be employed for any uh, odd magic square. So, maybe I will work out one example in the board, so that it becomes more evident. So, for instance, so let us take a 3 by 3, so I started with 1 here, so in the example which you find in the slide, so maybe we will start with 1 here. 
So, you have to move up one step. So, where will I place? So, this will get folded here. So, I have to place 2 here. So, then so I have to move up. So, this will get mapped here. So, 3. So, here I have to go up this way and uh, yeah, I will tell you there is a trick here. <laughs> so, here in fact, Narayana's verse very clearly tells. So, that is why I took this example. The prescription is the following, maybe I will just see if the verse is there, so that it becomes uh, more or less like nail, nail fixed on a uh, green tree. See, so ishtasha prathame koshthe, asha here means direction. So, I will come back to this example. So, <laughs> I will explain this uh, couple of words here and so how clearly Narayana prescribes. So, prathame koshthe shredhyankam prathamam nyaset. So, what I did was prathame koshthe shredhyankam prathamam. Shredi is basically arithmetic progression. It need not necessarily be this number. Any arithmetic progression will do, but this is the simplest example. So, prathame koshthe I have fixed it. Then what Narayana says is, so prathamam nyaset tat pratyasha. So, prantya koshthe samipe. Pratyasha means in the opposite direction. Fine. So, now look at here. So, since I have hit it here, so this is the direction in which I started. So, in fact, asha is direction. So, in this example which I have shown in the slide, so I started with this, so and then we moved on. So, this was, so I placed 2 here, so I had, I placed 3 here. So, when this was occupied, so what I did was I placed 4 here, you understand. So, I started in this direction and therefore, I had to move in the opposite direction, pratyasha. So, here I started in this direction and therefore, I have to, when I hit here, so I have to place it here, you understand. So, then 4, 5, 6, so you go here 7 here, so this this place actually maps to this place. So, it is a sort of torus which is filled. So, and then I have to place 7 here because it is the pratyasha direction. So, 7, so you go here, so this gets mapped 8 and uh, you go here, this gets mapped here 9. So, the same technique is applicable to this higher order also. So, you can perhaps take one more example. So, look at this. So, where we have uh, a 5 by 5. Uh, odd square here as an example. So, we can see this, you can uh, see the diagram. So, we start with 1 and then we move up here. So, this gets mapped to this point. So, you move diagonally up, you have 3 here. So, from 3 I have to go here. So, torus it gets mapped here, then you go 5. So, and then, so you hit with some other, some other number which is already filled. And since you have started in this direction, so you have to move down. If you were to start in this direction, you have to move left. So, if you start with this direction, you have to move up. So, that is the thing. So, here you move down 6 and then 7 and then 8 and then you move up here. So, this actually gets mapped here 9. So, it is a sort of torus and then you move up here. So, this gets mapped 10 and then, so this is already filled. So, you move down 11 and the whole thing gets filled. So, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and then, so at 15, so you have to move up here. So, this will actually get mapped here, right. So, which is already filled. So, and therefore, you move down starts with 16. So, you move up. So, this is 17 and then you move up, you get 18, 19, 20. So, this is already filled, you move down 21. So, and then 22. So, 23 gets mapped and then 24 and you move up, this gets mapped 25. Oh yeah. So, this is all filled. So, this is the technique by which one can, this is a ancient sort of technique. In fact, Narayana discusses this at a much later stage. In fact, he presents his own uh, new algorithm. So, by, by which one can construct not necessarily using this number. So, this actually start with 1 and then the common difference is 1, you use this element and the sum is fixed. Of course, there is a lot of fun even in doing this. 
but <laughs> yeah, Narayan actually presents so uh, uh, algorithm by which you can construct whatever number you want by a certain standard procedure by constructing appropriate arithmetic series. So, that is why he already say, he says start with uh, Adya and then you have to find out uh, Chaya, Adya and Chaya. So, uh, A and D you have to find out, then you can construct the magic square. In fact, if no, 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 why? In fact, Asha refers to direction. In fact, uh, if some of you know Vishnu Sasanama, one of these uh, slokas there, we have this reference of Asha, uh, one of these Dhyana slokas, Karna Vasha Shiro Dyauhu Mukham Apidahanaha. So, that is where this word Asha. Asha refers to direction. So, here Asha is Ishtasha, means you, are cho you can choose east, west, north, south, whatever you want. Ishta direction you choose. Then you have to sort of move to Pratyasha. Huh? Why not? See, you start with one, so you go there, you do not have a cell, you come here, Pratyasha, opposite. You move down. You start in this direction, you move down. That is, there, but if that is all. If it is not there, if we have to move down. No, down is basically you start with that direction. Yeah. So, it is in that sense. I mean, they only give a sort of sutra so from which we have to understand. So, how more? It is a, almost a. See, if you want to explain everything in words, it is almost impossible. So, one has to guess. And, uh, so, more or less, I mean, but the thing is, it is not like Aryabhatiya, which is very terse. So, Narayana Pandita makes it as simple as possible. In fact, uh, later mathematics works. So, uh, as you might have seen, even Brahmasputta Siddhanta makes it much more elegant with various examples. Aryabhata does not do all that. So, Narayana Pandita does it. In fact, much more, uh, in fact, this seems to be the most voluminous work that we have on mathematics. So, composed around and lot of uh, improvised techniques have been provided in almost every topic that he has discussed. Okay. In fact, uh, right at the beginning, he also gives uh, certain verses which actually present sapadaf padavargordham rupadi chayena bhavati sankalitam tad padamulena hritam phalam bhave dishtam ishta bhadre vai. So, here, uh, so he basically says what the magic sum will be. The word padam, so has to be understood as gacha, see number of terms. So, number of elements which go in filling the square, that is what is called padam. See, sometimes they use the word pada, sometimes they use the word gacha to refer to the number of terms in the arithmetic sequence. So, in this case, so, so pada varga refers to n square and ardham is half of that, sapadaha means along with pada. So, basically he says n square plus n divided by 2. So, you can easily see that basically what you have is an arithmetic sequence. So, series and that is what it is. So, he is just saying that sum. So, and rupa di chayena, uh, so bhavati sankalitam tat padamulena hritam phalam. So, phalam basically refers to the magic sum. Okay. So, that is what it is. And in fact, there is another verse. So, I do not know if I have quoted the verse. I have not quoted, but I will just tell you. So, in the very next verse after this sapadam, so Narayana gives uh, how to find A and D. If you uh, recall right at the beginning of the chapter, so Narayana said, so in dealing with magic squares, all that you have to do is see sadhyau tesham mukha prachayau. Mukha refers to A arithmetic <coughs> sequence and prachaya refers to D. So, the problem is basically given sum, you have to find out A and D. So, Narayana actually gives a verse by which uh, the equation which has to be employed in order to get A and D has been clearly stated and we will just present this equation now and not the verse. So, given the magic sum S and the order of the magic square N, the first thing that is to be done is to construct a magic square is to, to construct the magic square is to obtain the Shredhi, Shredhi is basically defined by A and D, right. So, to obtain A D, uh, so, basically n square elements have to be constructed. So, Narayana makes use of this kuttakara. In fact, he uses the word kuttaka also. So, see in this equation 1, s is the sum. So, by sum we mean, we mean either diagonal, pan diagonal, vertical, horizontal that is the magic sum. So, what will be the sum of the all elements? So, n times s. So, that is the left hand side, fine. And in the right hand side, so if you see that, uh, so A is the first term and this is the last term, so first plus last by half, so that gives the mean, 
and this has to be multiplied by n square because there are n square terms here, right. So, this is the equation which he has in his mind. So, all that he gives is this formula. So, therefore, we get S as n a n by 2 into n square minus 1 into d. So, n is known, what is not sum is also known that is given to you. The point is you give you give a sum and then you say, so what should be the dimension of the magic square 5 by 5, 4 by 4, 3 by 3 whatever. So, s and n are given and you have to find out appropriate a and d. So, this is the problem. So, you have basically one equation and you have two unknowns therefore, it is a Kotaka problem fine. So, a and d have to be determined. So, if you look at this equation we have repeatedly said while we discuss this Kotakara problem that uh, this will have a solution only when. So, this uh, if there is a factor ok. So, if there is a factor uh, the G C D of n and uh, n by 2 into n minus 1. So, that should be divisible. So, otherwise this will have no solution ok. So, this condition we have to just understand. And anyway, the point is so you will be able to get several such possibilities. In fact, right at the beginning of the chapter, Narayana says, so if you have one solution, then you have infinite number of solutions. And therefore, given uh, S and N, so if you are able to get one, then you will be able to get uh, infinite number of magic squares, in fact, for that. So that is the kind of implication of understanding this. So, how many such magic squares can be constructed? The way Narayana has given, he proceeded a certain way of this algorithm using this algorithm. So, you will be able to construct infinite number, right. So, that is the point I wanted to convey through this. Huh? You can get any any number, right? No, no, no. The point is, see, so you can you can have, you can also have fractions. You can also have fractions that is also possible yeah. So, nothing prevents us. <coughs> ah, so, now uh, so I will uh, very quickly uh, touch upon these three properties maybe we will take it up once more in the next lecture and then see how we can construct uh, magic squares using these properties. Ah, 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 all are possible all are possible. In fact, so you can do with negative maybe we will see one or two examples. Yeah. So, in fact, Narayana's text itself. So, if we see that as his manuscripts, so present some examples wherein some of the elements are negative. So, this element which is negative will be denoted by a small dot above. So, that is the kind of thing. So, in the construction which we find, so which has been a sort of transcript of what is there in the manuscript. So, when they try to reproduce in printed version of the text, so they have see suppose you uh, this number is negative, so they will put a small dot above this number which actually means negative ok. So, this is also possible, so you can have negative, you can have fractions all that you can have ok. So, the property one is given a 4 by 4 magic square and the entries are 1 to 16 which are sort of mapped into a torus which we are trying to explain by identifying the opposite edges. So, this maps to this, this maps to this and so on. Then the entries of any 2 by 2 sub square, see any 2 by 2 sub square. So, how many such sub squares can be had now? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and then center 9 that is all. You can map this torus also this 1 and 14 and then 11 and 8. So, totally you will have 15 ok. So, any of these sub squares so we will also add up to 34. So, this is one interesting observation which one has to make fine ah that is a kind of a <coughs> torus I would say ok. So, so, there are this is the first property, the first property is, so any of the sub squares, so 2 by 2 of consecutive rows and columns ok. So, not this and this, <laughs> so that is why when I said, so you have to just group this way and then, so this this 5 11 and 4 14, so they will sort of get mapped. So, 
so there is that is a kind of torus so that way you can have 15 possibilities so this is how it is huh? so you have the sum 34 this is first property the second property is uh, 4 by 4 pan diagonal magic square so if you look at the sum of diagonal elements with one cell left in between so in other words alternate diagonal elements so you look at the 7 plus 10 is 17 you look at 4 plus 13 is 17 you look at 12 plus 5 is 17 so you 6 plus 11 is 17 so you have uh, anything so of this nature so if you go here so it will sort of get mapped to 4 here so this will be 17 so all that is see if you look at here you have to go here so this will get mapped here so 4 plus 13 is 17 so this uh, alternate elements across the diagonal so they will sum up to s by 2 so this is next property i think i will stop here so we will continue in our next lecture thank you